the earth. We're going to be now. I want to let everybody know what we are. We're going to live Zoom and let the world know what God has done for us. Amen. All right, yeah. Amen. Amen. And while she is, uh, let's stand on our feet. Give God a standing ovation. Amen. to our great St. John Metropolitan family. Amen. Happy 18th Amen. year pastor and church's anniversary. As we have oftentimes said, to God be all the glory. Yeah. I just have to read this for you, great St. John. All praises to the Lord God of heaven for his loving kindness toward his humble servant. Pastor Scott and the members of Great St. John Metropolitan Missionary Baptist Church. We are the remnant that God chose to do his will by the divine guidance of his Holy Spirit. We are blessed, blessed, blessed to be able to celebrate 18 years yes. of building on the rock. Yes. We are so blessed, Grace St. John, so blessed. Yes. The rock is Jesus Christ, yes. who is our Lord, and he is Lord of heaven and earth. Malachi chapter three, verse 16 and 17 says, then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In the day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them as a man spared his own son that serveth him. Malachi 3, 16 and 17. Great St. John, I just had to tell you we're written in the Bible. I just wanted you to know that we are in the Word of God. He spared us. He kept us. He has blessed us. And He is sustaining us. To God be the glory. For those who are viewing, my name is Sister Alicia Winbush, and I am president of the Pastor's Aid. Pastor Scott, and to this church, God bless you. Amen. Now we will bring forth, as we begin, the first service of our 18th year pastor and church's anniversary. We will bring forth our mistress of ceremony for this first service. Sister Patrice Ely, and she will speak from this microphone here. And all speakers who are on program for tonight will speak from this microphone here. Amen. God bless you. Amen. In obedience to God, we go on to our pastor, to the officers of the church, and to the president, and to everyone here. What a blessing. Amen. What a blessing Amen. to be able to be yes. here to celebrate our 18th year anniversary. You know, we've been through trials and tribulations, but God, 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 he's yes. mighty God. He is awesome. He's a provider. Yes, he is. I thank God for this opportunity to be the mistress of the hour. And first up, we'll have a scripture reading by Brother Amari Johnson, and then a welcome by Sister Raquel Bodley. In obedience to God, double honor to you, Pastor Scott, and to the officers and to everybody here today, I will be reading for your hearing. Psalm 95, verses 1 through 6. And it reads, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. 
Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise and to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. And his hands are the deep places on the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he had made it, and his hands formed a dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. And the Lord add a blessing to the hearing of the reader of his holy word. In obedience to God, I give a double honor to you, Dr. Scott, to the officers of the church, to the president of the pastoral, to the mistress of ceremony, Sister Patrice, and to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Would you please stand with me as we give God another hand clap just to tell him thank you for 18 years that he did not have to allow us to see. He has been so good to us. Many have come and go, but look around. We're still here. Thank God for 18 years that he has put food on our table. 18 years he has kept our pastor in good health and strength. 18 years of him being a great God, of him bringing people back sick. We had COVID last year. But God, we are still here. Some lost their lives. But we are still here. Thank God for the children of the church. God kept them all year. It has been a long 18 years. But God has kept us. He's still keeping us. He is worthy of the praise, glory, honor, and dominion, and power forever and ever. May God continue to bless you. God, you are welcome. Because 18 years you've been good to us. You've been kind to us. You've kept us. So have a good time tonight because I have been excited all week to come here to let God know he is. Worthy of all the praise and the glory, no matter what you're going through. Come here tonight, shake the devil off, and let the Lord know he is worthy. He continues to be worthy, and he will always be worthy in this place. Have a great night tonight. Thank you, Brother Amari, for that encouraging scripture, and Sister Raquel Botley for that encouraging welcome. Yes. Now we'll have a theme. 18 years of building on the rock. Saint, I'm sorry, Saint Matthew, the 16th and 16th chapter, verse 18, from coming from Sister Jill Charles. Speak well. Speak well. Speak well. Speak well. In obedience to God, and double honor to you, Pastor Scott. For 18 years, God has blessed us. As Sister Botley was bringing that welcome, God is welcome here tonight. And always. I thank God for blessing me to stand here this night to speak on our theme, the church's theme, 18 years of building on the rock. All right, all right. And that rock, as our president stated, is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have been building on the rock, Jesus, it is God that has blessed this pastor and church to be where we are today. God has kept us. We start building on the corner of 1909 Market Street to Buttercup Restaurant to Monterey Pine and now to 985 53rd Street, our home. Pastor Scott, you have been teaching about this rock, which is Jesus. Yes. 
You have been fasting and praying and trusting God to keep this congregation. Yes. All right. We have a chosen and faithful servant of God, yes. a watchman for our soul. Yes. We could not have made it this far without God and a faithful and obedient pastor. All right. All right. Before coming to St. John, Pastor Scott had already been chosen by God to yes. preach Jesus. Yes. From the Lord for this membership and those looking in and live streaming with us, if you listen to the word of God coming from this man of God, you will be benefited. Amen. In Jeremiah 3.15, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, right, which yeah. shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Yeah. Again, building on the rock. Yeah. Jesus Christ mm -hmm. is building on the solid rock. Yes. In these 18 years, there have been some challenging times. The attack of Satan against the church with the judgment note on the door. Oh, my Lord, my Lord. The mortgage payment that was due. We, St. John, didn't know what was going on behind the scene. But God alerted our pastor to tell the church to hurry. Because something was going on that was not right because they were trying to take the church. Uh -huh. But God intervened yeah. and he told pastor to tell the church to hurry. Yeah. And through faith in God, this congregation yeah. had faith. Yeah. We got together. Yeah. We paid off this mortgage in six years and nine months. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. And that was $821,000. COVID-19, when churches were closing, pastor turned to God for a way to keep these doors open. God worked in his mind with the plan. He followed God's plan. And we were able to worship in this sanctuary yeah. where there is no vision, mm -hmm. the people perish. Yes. There have been many, many, many accomplishments and success stories in these 18 years yeah. in how Jesus brought us through. Yeah. We are blessed yeah. to be a part of this church. Yeah. And we are blessed to be a child to be a part of this church with all of the achievements under this, our pastor, yes. a true man of God. Yes. Let us, Grace St. John, continue building on the rock. Yes. Yes. Pastor Scott, keep preaching Jesus. Yes. For when we build on him, we will not fear the storms of life yes. and the attack of Satan. Because they're going to come. Storms are going to come in our lives. But we can go to the rock, yeah. which is Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus is, he is our refuge and strength. Yeah. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Pastor, for all of the messages you yeah. preach yeah. and all of your teaching. Yeah. In 18 years, Pastor, under your leadership, I have been and is still being blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Not only with material things. What I'm so happy about is that the joy of the Lord is in my heart. I gain strength and encouragement when I hear God's word. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Pastor Scott. Thank you, God. For preaching God's word. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Scott, for preaching and teaching. Thank you, Lord, for my life experience yes. and learning 
from the seminar. Thank you, Pastor, for obeying God from the seminar. What God can do. I know what God can do. I am so grateful to God that he gave us our pastor, Amen. Pastor Maurice F. Scott. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. To God be the glory yes. for your obedience to him. Yes. And in leading this congregation for 18 years, yes. building on the rock, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Yes. God bless you, Pastor Scott. Amen. Amen. I want to thank Sister Jewel Charles for those encouraging words. She, she spoke about our brief history and how the Lord has been providing for her and, and through the pastor with the word and just Amen. encouraging with the prayers and, the, and the, the services. So I thank God for that. Amen. Next we'll have testimonies about the pastor. Our first person would be Brother Xavier Martin. Amen. Brother Zoran Ely and Sister Noel Ely. Amen. He's coming that order. In the last well. God, don't want to you, Pastor, to the officers of the church here over here. Uh, I just want to say, um, Rev, I really appreciate you. You know, um, all this time I've been at this church, I really learned a lot, and uh, I've been doing better in school. Amen. My all grades right. have been been good, better than the. Before I wasn't in church, my behavior has been better. Um, I've been in every time. Every time I think about you, I think like you're a good example of my life, and I really appreciate that. Um, you teach me not just me, but everybody else how to live right for God, and um, teach the young men how to be young men, and uh, more importantly, like like you don't. Seek attention, like you be. You say, "Oh, it's just me and the Lord." And because before I always used to be like, "I need friends" or something like that, or I just want to always be around people. But now, since I look at you, I just be like, "It's just me and God." And I don't now. I don't have a problem with being alone. I look at you, and your examples, and what you do. And um, I've been praying. Read about more, and, and I just really appreciate you as a pastor, as a coach, and a teacher. And may God continue to bless you and your family. Amen. Amen. Obedience to God, double honor to Dr. Scott and Tom Susan to everyone here today. I'd like to say I want to thank God for you, Rev. I want to thank God for everything that you've done for me. I want to thank God for all the times that you've taken me and my sister out to get food. Every time when we would go on trips or just in general, I want to thank God for you praying for me when I would be in the hospital when I was little. I want to thank God for you doing, going out of your way to help me and my sister. Continue to pray for me and I'll pray for you. Amen. In obedience to God, I want to pass the stop to the officers and everyone here. Rev, I want to thank you for being a father figure in my life. I want to thank you for training me. I want to thank you for just being a good pastor and being there for me and praying for me. Because you pray for me back here. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Savion Martin, for your encouraging testimony and Zora Ely and Noel Ely as well. Next, we'll have a selection by the group. Amen. Amen. Amen.
in obedience to God, give a double honor to you, Dr. Scott, the officers of the church, the mission of ceremony and president of pastoral, and our brothers and sisters in Christ. We just want to tell God, thank you for 18 years, for God has really kept us and has blessed you to still be on your feet. And it was nothing but the grace of God that we are here today. So yes, we yes. would like to sing this song over God and we pray, we ask that you would pray with us as we sing it. Oh, 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 oh,
now without further ado, I will turn it over to our pastor. Amen. 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 against it. Yeah. This is why we're here. Because yeah. Satan can't win over yeah. what God has done and what God is doing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we, we, we will have a guest speaker, preacher Sunday, as well as the following Sunday. But Great St. John can't nobody tell it like this pastor here and you. We can tell our story better than anybody in this world because we have traveled these 18 years together. Before I, before I go far further, I, I, we just go, just reminisce and just, I, I, I'm going to preach tonight. And the Lord called me uh, in 1965 Ooh, yeah. in Amarillo, in, uh, let, me, let me get it straight, in Amarillo, Texas, yes. Uh, on a Thursday night, I remember my pastor saying the Lord spoke to him on a Thursday night. Isn't that strange? We were together in, our, in the dream this morning, but... Uh, on a Thursday night, and he called. He called me. All right. And uh, I'm not talking about I saw some sheep or horses out of the lead. I heard the voice. All right. He told me preach or die. All right. All right. All right. And I thought it was a nightmare at first. Sister President, I want to say God bless you. Amen. Sister Amen. President Alicia Winbush and to the committee Amen. and to this church in obedience to God and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and yeah. your most welcome Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to say to my 
darling little wife over there. God bless you. She's been with me longer than 18 years. But uh, uh, he called me uh, in Amarillo, Texas. On the 10th week, I was there 12 weeks for assignment. And on that 10th, the fifth test week, it was two weeks for every test. And I always wrote on my, my literature, Christ is the answer. I slipped my Bible at that time under my pillow. I don't sleep with my Bible under my pillow anymore, but at that time, I, I, that was the safest place as far as I felt. And I laid down and I, before I hit my, my head to that pillow, I was off in a great abyss somewhere. And I heard this voice say, preach or die. And I usually pray out of my nightmares. And then I started praying. And the more I prayed, it seemed like this, it was almost like a vice. Where I prayed, uh, the voice said again, preach or die. And it was the way I, uh, in, I don't know, it was, anyway, I can't describe it. As Paul said, I don't know whether I was in the flesh or out of the flesh, but I was way out somewhere, way somewhere in the hemisphere. It was in God's territory. I just leave it there. And the third time, I said, well, I started reading. I said, this is not a nightmare. This is the Lord talking to me. I said, if I don't uh, uh, consent to uh, preaching, I may not come out of this. And if I say yes and don't mean it, he knows that too. The third time, this voice, his voice said, preach or die. Now, I only got one option. I got two options. Die or preach. And I came straight up out of bed. I had my dog tags. That's in the military. You always had two dog tags around a little silver chain and a white, you always had, very clean in the military. Right, right. Had white t-shirts on. I came straight up out of the bed. I was perspiring like a, like somebody had poured water on me. I came straight up and said, yes, Lord. All right. Yes, Lord. And my roommate, my white roommate, he was over there like he was dead. He was, <laughs> and I laid back down, slept like a, like a baby. Got up and used to get up, used to get up at five o'clock to march to the mess hall and eat and, be in class at 6.30, 6.30 to 12.30. I couldn't wait that Thursday, that Friday, that Saturday. Um, that Saturday, I went up to the Apex, Apex, where we buy little trinkets, you know, right, two, right. toothpaste and, and toiletries and et cetera. And I went up there and it had a little telephone booth right there. And I called my mother. I'm in Amarillo, Texas, and she's in St. Louis. I said, Mother, guess what? She said, don't tell me. You've been called to preach. I said, how do you know that? I almost jumped through that phone. So when I got home, I, I completed my task, 12, 12 weeks there, three months, and caught the bus home. Yeah, caught the bus. I ain't flying. I ain't flying nowhere. I caught the tra 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 bus or train, one of these. Was it the train or the bus? I forget what it was. I got home anyway, St. Louis. And then uh, they, they had preaching arrangements for me. And my pastor, they had it on a Saturday. He heard my trial sermon. And then after that, I was scheduled to go uh, station in overseas for 15 months. And just as I had finished uh, one of the second, I think it was the second Sunday preaching and my mother said, look, you're going to take my car. I'm going, no. I said, no, I'm going to take my car. So I'm driving after preaching at a particular, I forget the church, and it was humid in St. Louis. It's, when, it's, when it's hot in St. Louis, it's humid. It's humid. Right. Right. And so I'm driving with a window down. We didn't have no air conditioning knock on. Driving there, this voice, this, this still small voice. Now, I'm, I'm I'm not asleep. I'm driving. This small boy said, preach Jesus. I, I stuck my head out the window. I'm driving now. I'm sticking my head out the window. I rolled the window. Stuck my, that voice, 
I remember that was in 1965 in July. The Lord chose me to preach Jesus. He called me, then he, he gave me the responsibility to preach Jesus. I tried to preach when I went to school and I was learning about Socrates, Aristotle, Descartes, Hume, and all those other philosophical, uh, Hegel, and, and uh, Lot, John Lot, and all that. I tried, it didn't work. <laughs> Just as dead as a donut. I said, let me get back what the Lord told me. And I'm telling you, I've had the joy of my life yeah. building on Jesus. Yeah. So I said, Wayne, I'd like for you to come up to this and read these, these few accomplishments. I just thank the president. This is a well put together program. I wish everybody could see this all over the world. What the Lord have done for us, just these few accomplishments. Yeah. Read these uh, accomplishments. Uh, that's begin, and we can read along. And then, it's great St. John, we're gonna preach this message together tonight. When you hear something that you wanna elaborate on, now don't take all night. I'm the preacher, okay? I'm the one can preach over 15 minutes. I'm the one can preach over two, two, two minutes, all right? Two minutes, two minutes. Let it ring in your heart, two minutes. Okay. All right, when you hear something, say, I wanna speak on that. Now this is our night. Amen. God has brought us 18 years. You shouldn't be ashamed to speak for the Lord. Amen. Because we're building, this everything we've done, we're building on Jesus. Amen. All right. In obedience to God, double honor to our beloved pastor, Dr. Scott, to the officers of the church, to president of our pastor's committee, Sister Alicia, to the MC, Sister Patrice, and to everyone here tonight and those that are looking on, we'd like to share some blessed events over these 18 years. Amen. We thank God for 18 years. I'll start with 2004, Great St. John Metropolitan Missionary Baptist Church was officially incorporated. June 9th, 9th, June 9th, 2004. Amen. Oh, right there. Before we came in here, we were looking for a building. We drove to Richmond. We drove different places. But the Lord, when we drove up here, I said, that's it. Uh, Deacon David, late Deacon David, uh, feels is with me. Yeah. I said, that's it. Amen. Talk about outside. Because the Lord has already shown me this building. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we were saving before we ever moved in here, before we ever had a building, we saved over $250,000. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. And, and, and I just want to say, it was incorporated, and uh, what did it do to Here he is. Great St. John. Great St. John, here he is. The mortgage deed. Six years and nine months. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's when we did pop with, right? Yeah. We paid it off in six years and nine. Well, I'm gonna show it anyway. <laughs> six years and we incorporated in Oklahoma, six years and nine months. This belonged to Great St. John. Right. Yeah. Forty yeah. members. Yeah. Yeah. Like forty years in the wilderness. Forty members. Yeah. To God be the glory. Yeah. Eight hundred. And twenty-one thousand dollars. Nobody, we didn't, we didn't borrow from any place. Right here, tithes and offerings, and we didn't miss a vacation. Go ahead, go ahead. 
our first missionary journey to Texas. Pastor Scott preached, what is your worth in the church? Yeah. 2006, major church remodeling. Oh. Pastor Scott was the vice president at large of the St. John Missionary Baptist Association. Pastor at Great St. John Metropolitan helped Hurricane Katrina victim Trina Gary from New Orleans yeah. by raising $30,000. An article was featured in the San Francisco Chronicle newspaper March 27, 2006. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. I'm waiting on everybody else. You're a part of this. Yeah. You're just sitting there. Come on, uh, St. John. Yeah. Don't say amen. You get up and speak. Go ahead, Donna. Pastor to Grace St. John and to those who are live streaming with us tonight. The Trina Gary situation when we had Hurricane Katrina back in 2005 was quite devastating in New Orleans. And someone named Trina Gary moved out here with her. She was relocated here to Oakland with her family. She was in Hayward. But um, she was robbed at gunpoint and yes. her FEMA, her FEMA check was taken from her. Yes. All her funds were taken. They didn't have anything. And God moved our pastor after he read the story in the paper. He contacted the officer, the sheriff that was involved, to get in contact with her. And he brought her to church yes. and her family. He helped to support her. And he allowed, God led him to put her story in the paper. And without us even calling out for people to help, the donations just started pouring in. Amen. It was week after week. It was somebody gave 2000 here. They get, and they didn't just give in the Bay Area. People were giving from outside. Yes of the Bay Area. They were given outside of California. God just touched hearts. And by the time the funds were raised for Miss Trina Gary and her family, she had twice than what was taken from her. Amen. And not only that, but her family was brought into church. She joined church. She and her family became members. They were saved. So you never know how God is working out. He allowed that to happen. So just so she could come in and just so God could do an amazing thing. He did an amazing thing for Miss Trina Gary and Great St. John. Amen. Building on the rock. Yeah, right. Jesus. Yeah. Concerning the remodeling, I just want to say something about that. All right. When we came in this building, it didn't look nothing like it looked right now. Amen. The, first of all, uh, we had no chandeliers. Mm -hmm. We had fluorescent lamps. We had no air condition even in the heat of the summer. That's right. We had no carpet on the floor. We had no, uh, the floor had a hole in it that you had to be careful where you place your foot because it would go through some of the holes in the floor. Amen. The pool pit was not like it is now. Mm -hmm. It was so much smaller that only the pool pit and about 10 choir members behind it was all that was up there. Mm -hmm. But the man of God had a vision. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and he yeah, extended yeah. it out to him. But yeah. while we was in the process, down at the buttercup, the Lord led our pastor to start saving. Yes. Yes. We didn't have no building. No. But we started saving for a building. Yes. Faith in action. And it had $250,000. Yes. And when we came in, this place was a shambles. Yes. We was grateful to God for the building. But it was in deplorable condition. Yes. Rooms were just horrified. Yes. Over in one area, there was a dead caucus in that area. Yes. In the back here was just filled. Yes. Back there was filled. But look what the Lord has done. Yes. Look what he has done. Yes. By faith, trusting in God and following leadership, $250,000. We remodeled all of this. Yes. We only had single doors. Now we have double doors. Yes. We have chandeliers. We have air conditioners. It gets hot in Oakland sometimes. Yeah. And during the summer, it's hot. Yeah. But thank God we can just flip on the thermostat. Yeah. Get it out. So thanks be to God what God has done in these 18 years. Yeah. This remodeling was no joke. No. It was God that was leading our pastor. Yeah. And we got pictures of it. Yeah. You see how horrified it was. But look at it now. We give all praises and all yeah. to God. Amen. 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 Sometimes it takes year to model or two years it took us two and a half months we worked like trojans 
yeah. these seats were soiled. Yeah. Like yeah. Dennis said, where uh, Sister Audrey said, yeah. yeah. women caught their heel. Yeah. It was just a hole right. there. Right. You come in and just so unhealthy smelling. Yeah. No fluorescent. I mean, it was just terrible. Yeah. But thanks be to God. Yeah. By faith, we yeah. save money. Yeah. Building on Jesus. Yeah. Believing. 2007, we took another trip to Knott's Berry Farm in Buena Park, California. 2008, Pastor Scott received his second master's degree in theological studies. I'd like to speak on that. As a church, we prayed and supported Dr. Scott and he went to school. He didn't just go to school online. He was working during the day, yes. teaching at a high school right. and coaching and pastoring, and then he was driving right. some miles to study God's word. He was told years ago he needed to study a little more. And he, my goodness, he has been studying. We were able to celebrate with Dr. Scott as he received his second master's degree in Theological studies. Amen. Thank you. Great St. John. 2009, Pastor Scott was appointed Vice Moderator at Large of the St. John Missionary Baptist Association, the Congress on Christian Education. Well, let me just say the association under Moderator Williams, Ray Williams. Amen. And that was from 2009 to 2013. Mm -hmm. 2010, the church took another trip to the Garment District and Disneyland in Los Angeles, California. I would like to speak on that. All right. Um, in 2010, and uh, when we had gone to the Garment District and Disneyland, on our way there on the missionary journey, uh, two sisters and I had gotten into a car accident on the way there and God spared our lives. We were able to leave the car and God allowed us to continue to go on that missionary journey. Yeah. The Lord uh, had made a way where no one died. The, the fire truck, the ambulance was right on the freeway, right on time. And God just moved in miraculous ways on that trip going yeah. to Disneyland. And we still went to Disneyland on that same day. People still had gone to the Garment District on that same day of the accident. So God truly blessed us during 2010. Amen. Also in 2010, the Congress on Christian Education Workshop, Dr. Scott was led to conduct a workshop entitled Sexual Sins. Mm -hmm. I have to speak on that. Yes. That year that you, the Lord led you to have the, a workshop on sexual sins, as it's been said before, the Lord uses you to not only preach, but to teach here at Great St. John. Yes. And it gives you different avenues to get his word out. Sometimes yes. it's, we're in like taking college classes, taking notes as you teach. Or sometimes it's a chance to raise your hand and ask a question, yes. and you'll answer. Or sometimes it's um, write a note of your thoughts or your questions, and then I'll pull it out and I'll answer. It could be anonymous. In this case, and in all cases, nothing is taboo. That's the point. Nothing here at Great St. John is under Amen. the cover. Amen. We can't talk about that. Right, right, it's the right. church. No, that's where it needs to be talked about. Amen. Amen. It needs to be taught because it'll be taught yes. according to God's word. That's and you right. won't hear that in the world. So the Lord led you to put that um, presentation together. We let, you let us practice. You told us what to do. And then the Lord let us go with you as you presented. We also were able to present this um, lecture on sexual sins, which is a blessing to the church. Amen. They know it God's way. Amen. Amen. 2011. We took a trip to Yosemite <laughs> National Park Amen. in Yosemite Falls. Amen. I would like to speak on that. It was a beautiful trip. Amen. I wasn't going to go, but I went anyway. I had a sciatic problem, a sciatic nerve problem, and I couldn't hardly walk. Mm. I was in the car thinking, okay, I'm going to be cool. I'm going to be in the car. 
Pastor came to the car and said, Carolyn, come on, get out of the car. And I said, what about? Come on, get out of the car. So he grabbed my arm and he said, don't look to the right, don't look to the left, look straight ahead. Yes. And that was encouraging to me. And I tell you from this day, that side, I don't have that side problem because I trusted in God. Pastor, thank you for your prayers. That was a wonderful trip Amen. for me. Amen. 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 Yosemite trip, but also the Garmin District and to LA. God used Pastor Scott to take us, those who went with him, on trips that we know we would not have gone on our own. Yeah. And God used Pastor Scott to give us experiences of seeing what it's like outside of Oakland. So I just want to tell God thank you, tell you Pastor Scott thank you for the blessed opportunity because Yosemite was a beautiful place to see. Yeah. Just walking up alongside and then seeing the waterfall from a distance yes. because there was a crowd there. And then you showed us how others were taking their family. Yes. And it's good for us to go see. Just get outside of Oakland and see what the beauty that God has all over this country. Amen. So I thank God for the blessed opportunity. Amen. Yeah. In 2012, we had another trip that we attended in Flagstaff, Arizona, the Grand Canyon, Sedona, and the Petrified Forest, all in Arizona. And I'd like to speak about the Grand Canyon. What a beautiful creation yeah. by our God. Amen. You can look at paintings, you can read about it in books, but when you are able and have been blessed by God with the opportunity to look at his handiwork. Yes, yes. To see his coloring. Yes. We look at crayons. We look at colored pencils. Oh, but it's not like the coloring that God has yes. and he yes. has done. Yes. God blessed us to see that natural exhibit. Yes. To be able to go and just look over the deep canyon. Yes. The deep crevices that our God created. Yes. We were able to see the petrified forest. Yes. Our God is amazing yes. in what he's able to create. And we thank God for the opportunity to simply experience, as the previous speaker said, something outside of Oakland, California. Amen. 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 Also in 2012, Pastor Scott was featured in the San Francisco Chronicle newspaper regarding Proposition 8. And that was November 17th, 2012. Pastor Scott and to my church family, to those who are live streaming, back in 2008, uh, Proposition 8 was regarding marriage between a man and a woman. And so the proposition involved upholding marriage as the institution between a man and a woman and not same-sex marriage between two of the same sex. So. Uh, back in 2008, I remember it was a tight election, but Proposition 8 was upheld. And I remember Pastor Scott, um, he was one of the only preachers, if I can remember, I didn't remember seeing other preachers of any race or color really come out and really support God's word and support the truth about marriage as God made us male and female and that he supported marriage between a man and a woman, and he came out openly and said it. That took a lot of, uh, that took courage from God to stand up and say something that was not popular because the government and other people, you had other celebrities, they were coming out against Proposition 8. They wanted to knock it down, but God had our pastor standing tall at a very critical time in this country. And uh, the newspaper, Dr. Williams was one of the ones too that I, we walked, we walked together, and there was others, but they, they contacted me, yes. had my picture in the paper, Amen. and one old gentleman, white Caucasian, called and said, you're on the wrong side of history. I said, well, let me be on the wrong side of history as long as I'm with God. Yes. 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 Now we'll move on to 2013. Great St. John Metropolitan Missionary Baptist Church wins the court case. Ooh, and that yeah. was September 16, 
2011. Yes. Oh, I like to talk about that. Amen. Amen. One day we came to church. He can spit through. Oh, okay. Yes, Lord. Oh. Don't tell me God is not a lawyer yeah. and a judge. Our right. Jesus, who we yeah. build up. Yeah. It transpired. One day we came to church, and there was a tag with an attachment on that door over there. Uh, foreclosure. A judgment. Mm -hmm. Judgment against Great St. John Metropolitan. $290,000. And he was hauled into court because of that. The previous owner was the one who brought that judgment against us. And we went to court. And the first time we were there, the judge was not favorable. Mm -mm. Uh, but on our second advent, uh, the Lord led our past. He told, he, he tell, told the church that he said, if told our attorney, if he want $250,000, give it to him. Say, if the Lord spoke to him, said, the Bible said, if he asked for your coat, give him your coat as well. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we went to court and, and went to court. And would you believe why? The whole holy point right like there. Let me, since we're doing this together, let me say this. The first time the attorney said, no, you just asked for 150000 I said, okay. And then I went back. Stay right there. So I went home. And I, I prayed. Now, the Lord, I said, Lord, and he condemned me. My conscience condemned me. The Spirit, Holy Spirit talked with me. <laughs> and I said, Lord, you said, and to come to me, if you want your coat, give me your cloak. Yeah, yeah. I was 3 o'clock, I think 3 a.m. in the morning, I don't know what time, it was very early. The Lord said, okay, you, uh, you do what I tell you to do, so to speak. I'm just paraphrasing. As I'm praying, it, it comes to me, okay, now you do what I tell you. You step back, let me take over. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. That's why I didn't pay any attention while the court was going on, Deacon Smith. That's why I was doing my dissertation. Right, I was writing right. this. Yeah, now yeah. you can go ahead. Yes, and as he was in the court doing his dissertation, and it's just a strange event. The <laughs> lawyer for uh, the plaintiff was not there. Yes, Lord. Uh, he was at another court. <laughs> another, and the judge brought forth, he says, uh, where is the lawyer, your lawyer? And the man, he said, he's over in another courtroom. Our lawyer said that. He said, in another courtroom, I have worked on this for so many hours, and you mean to tell me he's in another courtroom? He said, you go get him. <laughs> and then our lawyer had to go get him and brought him in. And he got chewed out by the judge. But to make a long story short, he threw the whole thing out. Yeah. So we got to start all over again. 290000 he threw it out. He threw out everything. Wow. Nobody but God. Yeah. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. Yeah. In these 18 years. Yeah. There are a lot yeah. more but <laughs> To God be the glory. Yeah. In 2013, we had Great St. John Metropolitan Missionary Baptist Church had a Sunday School Expo. Amen. During this expo, this was our, one of our, the Sunday School Expo that God led our pastor to tell the Sunday school department to do was really, really nice. It was a huge event because of the entire arrangement. The Sunday school teachers were responsible for gathering uh, really nice material. It was like a gift bag. And we were responsible for going out into the community to invite the neighborhood to church. And it was through the Sunday school department. It was so nice the way each teacher was responsible for gathering uh, material for their class, for their age group. We had Bibles. We had all kind of uh, little crosses. We had our own boots, 
outside in the church yeah, yeah. parking lot. And that was after the remodeling. So we had sufficient room. That was after the pavement was done in the parking lot. We had our own, every Sunday school teacher had their own table, their own setup. We had nice material. You would have thought that we had owned our own store on the parking lot. It was set up just that nicely. Every Sunday school teacher, we had bags galore. And it was beautiful to see the people come onto the church property that we had invited. And they just really uh, enjoyed themselves when we shared with them about our church. We had pamphlets. We had things to pass out to everyone who came. And just to see the Sunday School Department work together was really beautiful. And that's what stood out to me about our first Sunday School Expo. Amen. And with that said, Sister when are we going to move on? I'm going to take over now. And because uh, time will not allow us in these 18 years, as I come to the close of this, Thank you for reading. Yes, sir. We're going to carry on. But in these 18 years, we had our challenges, yes. but we didn't stop doing God's will. Yes. We were here every Sunday yes. for right. Sunday school, yes. for Sunday morning, yes. for Sunday evening, yes. Baptist training union, yes. on Monday, you still have the usher board meeting. Right. We used to have choir rehearsal on Tuesday. Wasn't yeah. right? Wednesday, we still have Bible study. Yeah. Friday, we still have our testimony. testimony. Yeah. Yeah. All of the challenges. We didn't yeah. stop right. doing what God right. We went on vacations right. in the name of the Lord. Yeah. 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 You remember, I just want to, I just want to close with this. gone on many trips. Yes. Amen. We didn't go on our own. No. No, no. Without the Lord. We yes. prayed. Yes. Yes. God took us to Canada twice. Yes. He blessed us to go to Canada yes. twice. Yes. While you was driving, Sister Alicia, yes, sir. whatever that broke, you was to stop on that freeway with 10 people or 12 people in the car. Yes, sir, the Lord kept that car going yes, because we depended, we were building on Jesus by faith. Yes, All the shops was closed on that Saturday, yes, but one. Yes, and they said that it couldn't be done until Monday, but oh God worked it out. Yes, Three hours later, we was on the road. Because we built, we built on Jesus. But you talked about Sister uh, Adrian while we were going. That's when I was invited to the late uh, President Sneed's anniversary. And while I was laying at Button. Uh, it wasn't Bud Willow. What's Bud Willow? Yes, sir. To pray. Bud Willow, that's right. To pray. You're right. To pray. I my I should have followed my mind, but I called Brother Chuck uh, Bolton. I say, uh, go around to each car, yes. brother. What's his last name? Boatman. 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 I say, go around to each car yes. and tell that car, each member, to pray. Yes. Now, now, Sister Alicia, yes, was that you that came to me? Yes, it is, Reverend. And what did you ask me? I said, Reverend, would you like for me to relieve Sister Adrian driving because she needed a relief driver? And what did I tell you? You said, no. As I felt led. Uh -huh. yes. Alright. See, you can't, you got to be careful mm -hmm. when you go somewhere without the Lord. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's always best. And 
and each car prayed. Yes. 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 And while we were on the highway, Sister Marcy was driving. Then I tell you to let her drive. Yes, sir. I say let her drive. Yes, sir. And while we were on the highway, was that the tire blew out? Yes, the back rear tire on the passenger side. Back rear tire, tire on the passenger side. Yes, sir. And you know, in my vision, I, now I wasn't there. I was way up the head, right. and they was telling me, in my vision on that dangerous highway right. between. Uh, uh, T. John and that that stretch there yes. on the grapevine, yes. and it's wide. Mm -hmm. It's almost like when that happened, mm -hmm. they I understand y'all start swerving yes. across the. Yes. Is yes, that right? Yes, swerving sir. across the freeway. Yes, sir. It's in my mind. I can see God mm -hmm. saying, "All right, oh, since the devil me? trying to get, take you out of the yeah. traffic yeah. Yeah. and show my power, yeah. because they depending on Jesus." And, and while they were, it, from my understanding, while they were going across and they hit that embankment, mm -hmm. yes, sir. They, right. they told me that they had an accident. I drove back. Yeah. Yes, sir. And what did the what did the uh, uh, officer ask you? Was it an officer? No, it was the insurance company. They were uh, totaled out my car, and the first thing he said was, "Who died?" Who died? Yeah. It was just that bad. Yes. But see, when you got Jesus in. Yeah. When you have Jesus, you're building on Jesus. He is the life saver. Oh. Took him to, to the hospital. Um, that was outside of L.A., wasn't it? Did we go to? Uh, yes, I believe they took her to Valencia. Valencia, yeah. And Sister Scott and I drove back up there mm -hmm. once we got situated and so forth. Yeah. And didn't I tell you all that the Lord let me know, I said, now, we, you won't get back in time to put, to make sure, you won't get back in time to turn in your car. David, he said, he said, he told me, he said, mm, we gonna get back. He, he told me that later. He said, "I was in my mind. We gonna get back." Right. <laughs> now, did you all get back in time no, no. to turn in your cars when you were late? All right. The Lord had already. We drove around Los Angeles for almost an hour. Amen. I know my GPA. I, I drive a Mercedes. I know my GPA works. That GPA had us all going everywhere. Sister, Tom, uh, Sister Thomas and them got lost. Right. We had to find them. Right. We had to wait on David. Yeah. <laughs> and then when we drove into the Chevron station, I could feel the release. I said, all right, now we can go. And we took off. Went around that track. Oh, we was flying down the freeway here, right? Oh, we gonna get back. Did you all get back in time? I told you. As you are led, he that is led, you can't lead people without Jesus. You can't build without Jesus. Everything we do. What about when we were coming back from it? Was that the same time when that mud storm hit? No, that was a different time. What about when we went across the Missouri Bridge when that monsoon hit? Yes, Nobody could see. Did we get across? Amen. What about when he was coming back? The storm was coming. Yes. They said the storm. Yes. The Lord led us back. Yes. I told y'all how to get back. Yes. When you're led and when you're dependent on Jesus, he will lead you. He will lead you. That's why this church has been so successful. Because God we're building on Jesus. It's not rock and mortar. It's our faith. You can't go anywhere. You know, you talk about building. You got to build on Jesus. That's what we've been building on. 
No man can do these things except God be with him. When you were worried, Sister, uh, uh, Sister Carolyn, when you came to me, I told you, they won't find nothing. Is that right? That's right, sir. Yes, sir. I went to you and I asked you to pray because I had this, uh, it felt like a lump or whatever in my breast. And I said, Rev, I got to go to the doctor. Please pray for me. And you said, they not going to find nothing. Did they find something? No, they found nothing. Amen. Nothing. All right. God All is right. able. Patrice, when the doctor told you he was going to have twins in February, was that April or sometime? February, what did I tell you? What happened? <laughs> what did I tell you about that baby shower? <laughs> when was they going to have it? Uh, January. Uh, I said, you won't make it. <laughs> we can go on, but how we are building. Right. We are, he that is made, we are building on Jesus. Nobody can tell our story better than we can. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Our Heavenly Father, as we come to the close of this opening celebration of 18 years, of what you have done, how you have guided us, oh, thank you, God. how we have depended on you. Oh, yes. We just humble ourselves thank saying thank you. Thank you, God. Thank, you God. thank you for your Holy Spirit. Yes, thank, you. thank you for what you have done for us. Yes, Lord. Oh, my Lord. Hearing our prayers, yes, healing the sick. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you for saving our souls. Thank you, God. Thank you for one another. Thank you for Grace St. John. Thank you for this remnant. Bless the children. Bless the youth. Bless the young. Bless the adults. Bless the seniors. Bless these who are the sound of my voice. And Lord, who, uh, whoever is uh, zooming in, bless their life. Yes, God. Yes, God. Look upon them, Lord. Yes, God. Those who are depending on you, Lord, yes. and those who don't know you, touch their hearts touch that they may Lord. know you yes. in the part of their sins. Yes, to let them know, Lord, that it's, it's life building on Jesus. Yes, you are the true foundation. Not money, not gold, not houses, yes, not lands. Yes. Yes. Husband or wife, children, but you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Remember this neighborhood. Thank you for this building. You blessed us. This house of prayer. While we're here in this body. Bless those who have given in the offerings. And bless those, Lord. We thank you tonight. Yes, God, we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Before I close this prayer, look upon the sick and the afflicted. Yes, God. Oh, yes, Lord. That boy, that girl, that man, that woman who don't know you in a part of their sins. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for this president. Yes, God. Sister Alicia yes. Winbush who's working God. diligently. Yes. Thank you, God. Bless her. Yes, God. Strengthen her where she's weak. Build up where she's torn down. Yes, God. Bless this congregation. Yes, God. This remnant. Each one, Lord. Each one. I pray this prayer. Thank you for where you brought Sister Audrey. Thank you, Lord. It's by depending on you, by faith, Lord Jesus. You're the doctor. You're the one who brought us. Oh, yeah. There were doctors in the hospital, but you were the main doctor. Thank you, Lord. To 
God be the glory. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. To God be the glory. To God. This concludes the first day of our anniversary. Friday we will have our uh, teachers meeting and Bible study. God bless you for those who are looking in next time.